Ah, uh, hello old friend, Eco OBD2. We meet again, and it's another newer version. And this uh, seems appropriate to make this video at this time because there is this fuel shortage or, or this fuel crisis that's entirely man-made. There's not a fuel shortage. And people will be looking for ways to actually save on the astronomical fuel bills that are occurring because the cost of filling your vehicle is very expensive. So this is for diesel cars, but you also get a different coloured version for gasoline cars and for LPG vehicles. It doesn't really matter. They're all the same inside and they don't actually do anything. So let me show you the unit and how you're supposed to use it. Then we'll open it up and analyse what's inside and see if it can actually do anything to your vehicle at all. So it has information inside showing the different places you might find your OBD port. OBD means onboard diagnostics. It's used by mechanics to analyse your vehicle's fault codes uh, and interrogate the engine management system to find out, you know, to give clues as to what may be going wrong in your overcomplicated car. The instructions that come with this, well, here's the listing for a start. It cost £6.49, a bargain, given how much it saves you. Um, uh, it was described as Eco OBD, OBD2, Economy Fuel Saver Tuning Box, Chip Device for Diesel Car Gas Saving. And then the instructions are, they say, well, that advertises first by saying, According to your driving habits, Eco OBD2 makes new map in the car's computer ECU for the vehicle's lower fuel consumption. As you're driving much more kilometre mile, Eco OBD2 renews the map and adjusts itself to match your car perfectly for more fuel saving. Um, at the bottom it says the instructions for operating it are pull the car key out from the ignition, find the OBD2 connector in your car and plug in the Eco OBD2. Insert the key into the ignition and twist the key to the first stage. Do not start the car, that's really important. It's not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, insert the key into the ignition and twist the key to the first stage, do not start the car. Press the button, there's a recess button in here. Uh, for about 5 seconds, after releasing the button, just wait for about 30 to 54 seconds. Eco OBD2 will communicate and establish connection with your car. Start up the engine and off you go. And it says it may not show savings until it's been driving for about 200 kilometres when you've forgotten the money you spent on this thing that has quite a high ambient parasitic current draw. Let's, well, let me actually power this up because I'll just hotwire it. One moment, please. OK, that's it now running. And what I can see here is a dull green glow and a little yellow flashing LED. And if you push the reset button, the yellow LED stops flashing. Uh, it doesn't really show the sort of data effect that most of them give. This is very simple. Right, tell you what, let's open it up. For reference, I just hooked this onto the chassis or chassis connect and chassis connection. Chassis in the UK, chassis in America and chassis. Uh, si tu parles français if you speak French. Pop this out. Okay. Not even a microcontroller. That's a first. Uh, this is, is this a two transistor multivibrator? Right, tell you what, one moment please. I'm just going to reverse engineer this. Oh yeah, the worst one ever. It's the cheapest, nastiest fake OBD type device I've come across so far. So there are only three pins connected. There's the two chassis or chassis connections. There's the permanent 12 volt. The permanent 12 volt is important here because that does mean this thing poses a current draw of about 19 milliamps continuously on your vehicle for doing nothing. So not that economic at all. And it is a two, tran two transistor uh, a stable multi vibrator. You've got uh, three LEDs. There's a red one that wasn't visible through the blue case. This isn't a surprise. It would have been nice to have a little panel so you could see the other LEDs, but no, no, they didn't do that. And it has a red and a green LED, and then it's got the flashing yellow LED on one of the channel. And I can't help but feel they missed a trick here by using lower value capacitors and putting two LEDs across the multi vibrator. They could have actually had it jiggling backwards and forwards like the data communication that you see in the other ones. The button just shorts one of the capacitors. Let me show you the schematic. This is, this is just bewildering. They've economized, but there are, there are 
flaws in the design. It's just like, let's just botch something, but we don't really know what we're doing. Much like many of these other products sold on eBay. Now, I want to mention, you do get genuine uh, OBD2 type programmers. They're very expensive. They don't cost like less than seven pounds on eBay. And they're very specific. They're specific to an exact make, model, engine, software, everything. It has to be specific because uh, if you just randomly corrupt uh, the data settings in an engine management unit, it's a hiding to nothing. So here is uh, your little A-stable multivibrator. Normally, they would put an LED up here, right? And not down here, but that's where they did it. This LED is not here. That's where they should have put it. But they didn't. It's two, uh, what are the transistors? J3Y. J3Y. I'm also right. J3Y over there, or J if you wish. Um, so there's the, uh, the circuit that just toggles backwards and forwards and flashes one LED. The other two LEDs are just static. And when you press the button, it bridges this capacitor, which effectively turns this off. So the LED stops flashing, then you release it, it starts flashing. For some reason, they've got a ghost position for another button, which would affect the other one. So maybe it would just make the LED stay on while you held the button in. I'm not sure what they were thinking of here, but I don't think they were thinking of much. They were thinking, let's make lots of money. And that's exactly what they've done. So uh, this is it. Your OBD2 economy device, the most recent version, is not just fake, but just the cheapest, nastiest fake. The only thing it's really useful for is, aside from the fact they've actually cut a lot of the pins off so they could actually just stick them through the circuit board and make space for the switches and things like that, you could still solder onto those. So you could actually buy one of these just as an OBD2 module uh, that would look quite nice. So tell you what, before we go any further, let's hook this up again. So I shall hook the the negative onto the chassis, or chassis, chassis, and the positive onto the connection here, just to show you that inside that is actually quite bright. Perhaps I could brighten this up further. Uh, but it is actually quite bright in there. This is why it's drawing uh, so much current. It wavers up and down, 18 to 19 milliamps, and that's 24 seven you plug this in. So it relies entirely on the deception of the procedure of you turning the engine off, plugging it in, uh, turning the engine, the key on to the on position and then pressing this button that then stops that LED flashing. And then you release it and, oh my God, it's connected to the processor now and it's doing all that energy saving. Then you start the car and you drive hundreds of kilometers or, or miles until it's learned your driving characteristics, by which time you've probably convinced yourself that it's actually saving you money when it really isn't. Uh, so these things are just not a scam. On a plus note, this one isn't trying to do anything to the canvas connection. Some of them fake it with extra circuitry. And when they fake it with extra circuitry, sometimes they do have connections uh, to the canvas network positions to random components. And if you plug one of those ones into your vehicle, it can actually jam the canvas network and throw loads of errors up. If that ever happens to you, unplug it immediately. And after a few uh, starts of the car engine, it should actually progressively clear the faults that uh, it logged by failing to communicate with other devices and network while this was jamming them. But this one's fairly passive. Uh, buy it for fun. That is all you should buy it for. It's a novelty. It is completely fake and will not save you any money.